Hey there, crafty friends. My name is Sherry Roth. I'm a Stampin' Up! demonstrator from Canada. And welcome to this week's Friday Facebook Live. Um, today, I thought I would share um, a simple card layout featuring some of our beautiful designer series paper because it's on sale this month. Um, or so, lots of it is on sale this month anyways. So we've got several packages that are on sale for 15% off. So what I'm gonna do today is I am going to share one card layout and um, we're using stamps, ink, and paper. So paper includes both cardstock and designer series paper or patterned paper. And these card layouts or this card layout because it's the same layout just tweaked a little bit to create four different cards um, is a simple one that you can it's great for mass producing, it's great to use with any of your pretty paper, and it really highlights the paper because we've got so much beautiful paper. Okay, um, and all you'll need is some patterned paper, coordinating cardstock, and a greeting set. Now I chose to use the Inspired Thoughts greeting set, which is one that jumped out at me from the annual catalog. I love the font, I love how they've mixed kind of uppercase and lowercase and I, what I really, really love about it is there's a greeting for the outside and a greeting for the inside as well. Okay, so we're going to use this. This is actually part of a bundle. There is a die set that kind of complements it, um, but we're not gonna use the die set. We are just using a greeting set. So this is a great idea if you guys wanna come back to this video and if you're looking for quick and easy cards, this is one that you'll be able to recreate. If you are a paper crafter, you have everything that you need on hand already. Um, but if you love any of the patterned papers that you see me use, you know that those are on sale until the uh, until August 2nd. Okay? All right. Good morning, Mary Liz and Shara and Kim. Welcome. Happy Friday to you all. Okay. So we are going to start with the Tidings of Christmas paper. So yes, we're going to make a Christmas card today, but that's okay because we're going to make some um, a sympathy card as well and I've got two other cards as well to share with you. Okay so this is a six by six pattern paper pack so again the this idea is a great one for whether you've got six by six, six by eight or twelve by twelve cardstock it will work. Okay so these are the first side of this patterned paper so pretty the colors in this paper are cherry cobbler, evening evergreen, misty moonlight, Sahara sand, soft succulent and basic white. And then here's the back side. You can't go wrong with stripes. And this pattern here, I love this pattern. Unfortunately, I love this side too. Um, it's always hard when you love both sides of the paper. But some of these patterns you can use even when it's not like the, Christ the holiday season. This one I think you could get away, when not during the holidays. This one as well. Um, this one would be great for like a wintry kind of birthdays I think would be good. And then of course the stripes would be good anytime. And this one. All right. Okay. Let's go ahead and get started. Good morning, Shirley. Good morning, Dixie. Okay. So I actually haven't created this card yet. Um, I created three other alternates. We're going to make two of them and then I've got two additional ones. So I'm cutting, we're going right from scratch. I'm cutting my card bases, cutting my layers, everything all with you today. Good morning, Elaine. So for a card base, I'm going to do Sahara Sand. So I'm gonna bring in my paper trimmer. And what I always do when I create a card is I will, if I, if I don't already have a pre-cut card base, I automatically just do two. So this is an eight and a half by 11. I am going to score it at four and a quarter. and rotate it and cut it at five and a half. Okay, so I automatically have two card bases. Now, one of the reasons why I do this is, well, there's a few different reasons actually. Um, if you're gonna create one card, you might as well make two. You get two out of a, a eight and a half by 11, so you might as well make two of them while you've got everything out. Um, the second reason is a lot of times I am prepping for a class or prepping for a video, something to share with you guys. So I need two anyways. So one will be my sample, one will be for when I do my video. Okay. All right. So we've got our card base, which is Sahara Sand. And then I'm going to take a piece of soft succulent and 
This is going to be my matte layer. I'm going to cut it at five and three eighths. So just two ticks before the five and a half. And rotate it and cut it at four and one eighth. Okay, so that's gonna go on there. And then I'm gonna take my DSP and I'm going to cut this at four inches. Okay, I, first of all, I just wanna make sure if this, to see if this is directional. No, no, it looks good anyway. Okay, so I'm gonna cut it at four inches. And the reason why I'm cutting this measurement first is because by cutting the smaller cut first, it's gonna give me a nice two inch by six inch strip on this one side, okay? Which is a great size to use for another card. So four inches, this I will set aside and I'll use that on a different project. And then I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna rotate it and cut it at five and a quarter. And I'm going to use this one on my card and this one I'll use on the inside. The thing that I've already pre-cut is a four by five and a quarter inch piece of white. That is for the inside. So this and this will be used for the inside. And I've also got a one inch strip of white cardstock here. Okay, so I think we're done with the paper trimmer. We'll set this aside. We're gonna bring back our card base. We're gonna do a portrait card for this particular one. So I'm gonna take my card base and fold it in half. Use my bone folder to make it nice and crisp. And the whole point of the cards for today is that these are simple cards. Simple cards that you can recreate with what you have on hand um, and just really highlight your patterned paper. Okay, so I'm using some ev Evening Evergreen ink and from that Inspired Thoughts greeting, I'm going to use the Peace, Love, Joy because we're making a Christmas card. So this first one is going to be super simple, but we're going to step up the next one a little bit. Okay. So this is going to get stamped right on here, just like that. And we'll leave that out because we're going to need that again in a minute. All right. So now this is going to get attached to my mat. So I just have a hint of that soft succulent peeking out behind, but adding that soft succulent just really makes that beautiful green pop in this DSP. And then we're going to add this strip down the edge. So I've kind of marked with my finger how high up I need my adhesive. And then I'll use my grid mat as an idea on where to position it. Make sure it's straight. Okay, that looks good. And I've lined it up with the edge of the cardstock. And I'll flip this over and trim the edge. I know simple is good, right, Mary? I, f I feel like sometimes when you're a longtime card maker, you always feel like you have to add more, right? When you've been doing this for a long time, simple is really hard to do. I really have to force myself to, okay, Sherry, that's enough. Like you don't need to add more. It's beautiful just the way it is. I really have to tell myself, like here, I think, oh, I could add some sequins, I could add some ribbon, and yes, you could. You could add all those things to step it up, and I'll share. A version of that um, with you guys but it's not needed especially when you're mass producing something like this um, like a Christmas card where I don't know if you guys can hear that but my goodness my daughter's making a lot of noise upstairs um, <laughs> uh, when you're mass producing things like Christmas cards where you need lots of them simple is good and plus you also have to remember that sometimes um, 
when you add more, it increases the postage, right? Which is great and that's that's you know that's fine for like a special birthday or something like that. But when you're sending out 50, 100, 150 or more Christmas cards, you don't want to have to spend two bucks to mail a card, right? All right, so there we go. There's our first version of Simple. So you can see how you can use lots of these patterned papers. You could do this, this pattern. Oops, let's turn our trees the right way around. Have this strip be soft succulent and stamp right on the soft succulent. You could do this one and it would just completely change the look of the card. Okay, so that is card number one. Oh, hang on. I left my ink out because there is a greeting for the inside. So there is wishing you all beautiful gifts of Christmas. So we'll stamp that in evening evergreen right in the center of our card. There we go. Okay, now we're done. Okay, so let me slide these things out of the way so I have room to move on to the next one. So a simple card, you can switch up these layers. You could make this a little bit smaller and make this a little wider so that you can see these colors a little bit more. But I love this thin little mat with just the peaks of those two mat, matted colors and really showcasing that pretty patterned paper. Okay, so let's move on to the next one. The next one, I do have my pieces pre-cut. This time we are going to use the Beauty of the Earth DSP. So this DSP, this is what it looks like. This one, this is the one we're going to use. And then this one, so those are side A and then side B. So this is another one that is on sale. Some beautiful patterns in there. Okay, so I'm gonna set this aside. All right, and here are my pieces. So my card base is going to be Mary Merlot, four and a quarter by five and a half. Oh no, so, no sorry, five and a half by eight and a half scored at four and a quarter. And then my layer, I believe we're using, yeah, we're using the same, same measurements. My layer is four and an eighth by five and three eighths. And that is cut from, <laughs> that was cut from um, early espresso. Mary Liz says, this is interesting. I was thinking it was more for scrapbooking. Well, you'll see what I do with this card, with this, this one, Mary Liz. Um, let's not add this just yet. Sorry, I was distracted here. And then my DSP measures, um, well, this one is four inches. So I cut it at four inches and then I think I cut it at five and a half inches because what I did, let me grab that piece here. Okay, so what I did, this is actually meant so that you can cut it down the middle and you can use kind of the two the top and the bottom as a border, okay? So whether it's for scrapbooking or card making, it doesn't matter. Um, so what I did was I didn't wanna cut off a lot of this top part. So I ended up cutting it at five inches. I could have cut it at six inches and then trimmed it down, but I also didn't want a ton of white showing. So I cut it at five and a half inches. I am going to need to trim it down a little bit smaller so that it fits on my layer. So. I'm gonna trim it down on the darker end and that will get trimmed down to five and a quarter. And we're gonna save this little bit, okay? So that's the only trimming I think that we need to do for this one. And then, okay. I'm gonna go in ahead and adhere these layers This is one of my favorite patterns from this paper pack. I just love it. I love how it's kind of got that ombre look. I love the colors. And then this is going to go on our card base. But 
we have that hint of Mary Merlot peeking out from behind. And I realized I'm missing a piece of white. Let's see, I got some scraps behind me. This should work. Okay, so this on this card we went this way. On this card we're going to go this way. All right. And I'm going to use the greeting that says with heartfelt sympathy and I'm going to use early espresso ink. And I'm going to stamp this off to the right. And I'm going to trim this down a little bit. It's a little bit wider than I'd like it. So we're going to trim just a sliver off of this. Let's cut this to four and a quarter. So for this one, I'm going to go all the way across the card front. So just making these minor alterations. So from this one, going from a vertical greeting to a horizontal greeting, you'll see that it really changes the look of the card, but it's still the same card layout. Okay, so now this is going to go right across. I'm going to use just regular multi-purpose glue. So just like on the other card where we did it with just a little bit of a border on the right, this one we're going to do it with just a little bit of a border on the bottom. Just like that. Now we could leave it like that, but I'm going to show you how you can step it up um, just very simply. Now on my sample, uh, which I'll share with you in a moment, I used some early espresso ribbon and I just used a scrap that I had sitting on my desk and I don't have any left. So what I did for this one, I really like the look of the early espresso. So what I decided to do was take this, uh, what is this called? Whisper White Crinkled Seam Binding Ribbon and color it. And I looked at my blends because that's usually my first choice in how I color a ribbon is with my Stampin' Blends, but we don't have any early espresso blends. We do have like a bronze blend, but it wasn't quite the right color. We have soft suede. They weren't right the quite the right shade that I was looking for. So I decided to go with Stampin' Write markers uh, because you can color your ribbon with these markers as well. They are water-based, so they take a little bit longer to dry. So I've gone ahead and I've colored a piece just so that it would dry because I didn't want that ink to get onto my card. Okay, so all you do when you do this is you take the brush tip of your marker and you just color. Mine actually is not very juicy anymore. So I have to add, I have to go over it a fair bit. So you just color like that. And then I did flip it over and I colored the backside as well. You may or may not need to do this depending on how juicy your marker is and what color you're using. But I figured by coloring the back, it just gave me more, it, it was a more concentrated look. It was darker. It was kind of the look that I was going for. Okay. All right, and then you'll want to let set that aside so that it dries a little bit before you add it to your card. So you can see here, I've got a little bit of white on the side. So I'll just trim that off. And then we're gonna use mini glue dots. So white ribbon is always something that is great to have on hand in your collection because you have that flexibility to make it whatever color you want. Probably could have cut this a little bit longer. Okay, so we're gonna add that on there and then I'm gonna take a little bit of linen thread and tie a bow.
and then I'll use a dot of multi-purpose glue. You could also use a mini glue dot. I'll stick that right on there. Let's trim this end. And that's going to take a minute to set. And there is the outside of our card. Now we're going to work on the inside. So let's slide this over. Remember this little strip that I cut off the bottom? I'm going to use that. And I've also cut a strip of early espresso. So I'm going to add a little bit of adhesive on the back of both of these pieces. These are both about a quarter of an inch. And I'm just putting them at the top. And this just brings a little bit of the outside of the card into the inside of the card. And you may as well use those, those scraps that you end up trimming off. Why not put them to good use? Okay, there we go. Flip this over, I'll trim off the rest. Yes, you're right. This could be a great um, non-girly card, as Mary Liz says, but it would make, make a great birth, uh, masculine birthday card. Um, a thinking of you card, thank you card. It really could be used for any occasion. Okay, so now the inside greeting for this particular one is called, it, or it says, sheltering you with love at a time when words fall short. So we're going to ink this up with early espresso and I'm going to stamp this right in the center and then add that to the inside of the card. I'm just going to give that another minute to set before I open the card. I don't want it to fall off. I happen to have another scrap of this so this is the obviously the lighter portion of this card and it happens to fit on my envelope flap so this is another great way to use your patterned paper because you know what you don't want to hoard your patterned paper you want to use that pretty paper and share it because there will always be more pretty patterned paper to buy i know isn't that a great sentiment i seriously love this stamp set um, any greeting sets that kind of have, you know, a variety of greetings that I would use all of, I always buy. Because there's, I find in some greeting sets, there's always some of those greetings that I just, they, they're just not me. I just wouldn't say something like that. So I don't like to use something if it doesn't, I don't know, if it doesn't sound like something I would say. So... This is one where every single greeting in this set I would use. So I'm just trimming around the edges of this so that I've got a pretty envelope to go with my card. All right. Okay, so look at that. Isn't that pretty? It's so pretty. All right, let's add this to the inside and then this one is done. Okay. There we go. So see how much that, just that little strip of DSP, it adds so much to the inside of the card. Okay, so here is card number two. Let's bring back card number one. So you can see that it's exactly the same layout. The only difference is this strip ended up going from a vertical strip to a horizontal strip. And then we added that little bit of embellishment on there. Okay, so you guys wanna see some more versions of this card? Let me slide. We'll bring these all back at the end. Let's do. Okay, so, oh, hang on. First, I was going to share with you. Okay, so this was the colored ribbon with the marker. And this is the, I think it's called faux suede early espresso ribbon. 
Um, I think it gives the same look. It doesn't look too different. I kind of wish I had colored a little bit more and it was a little longer there, but apart from that, it looks it looks really good. Yeah, let's bring it a little closer so you guys can see. So just that l touch of ribbon and linen thread just really steps it up. You could even go a step further and add some um, embellishments, but not needed. Remember, we're keeping these simple. And then, so obviously this is just the bottom bit of this. So this actually goes, it just continues on. So this one's just a little bit darker, this one's a little bit lighter, but still the same patterned paper. Okay, and then now you can change the sizes. So for the, this next one, I used the Bloom Where You're Planted DSP. Now I don't have much of this left. I have ordered some, but it hasn't come in yet. So I'll share what I have left of this. We've got this one, which is kind of, has a tropical kind of feel to it. And then the back is this really pretty brick pattern. This, this pattern is a really great one for either die cutting or um, a fussy cutting. And then you've got a wood grain, can't go wrong with wood grain. We've got this one, which you can see that I've cut out a lot of, <laughs> of the images. And then that's the back side. This one, which is another one of those border papers, which is the one I used on the sample that you'll see. The back side is just kind of a gray distressed kind of look. We've got this one here and then with a brick pattern. And this one here, which is another one, you can see that I fussy cut a lot of pieces from this and it's got a wood grain pattern on the back. And I think that is it. I think that's all six of the patterns. So this is Bloom Where You're Planted, another one that is on sale for 15% off this month. Slide this over here. Okay, so you can change the size of the card. So here I've done a slimline card. And for those of you who are not familiar with slimline cards, these are um, when you cut it, it's seven inches by eight and a half inches scored at three and a half inches, okay? and it fits into a number nine office envelope. So you can just get those envelopes just at your local stationery store. Um, so what I did was I took the two greens that are in this pattern paper, again, that this is one of those border pattern papers, so it had this same pattern along the top. I just cut, it had to be, I think it was eight, eight and an eighth inches let me just measure just to make sure in case you want to recreate yeah eight and an eighth inches is the the length or the height of the patterned paper so you can see that you can see just a little bit of the pattern there all right um, and then I matted it with just jade and then the card base is garden green and I kept the layout the same so my greeting goes across the bottom thank you so much and I did feel like there was a lot of white space at the top. So I did add a couple scraps up here, just flagged the ends and then added um, a little Baker's twine bow. And then on the inside, I added just another little strip of that. And I guess I could stamp the inside greeting for this one as well. Okay, so that's another uh, version. You can do, um, you, can, you can do this card design in any card size. Um, you could do it in a square, four by four, four and a quarter by four and a quarter, six by six even, three by six, which is a mini slim line. Um, so there's lots of different card sizes that you can do. Uh, Dixie asked if the slim line sized envelopes take extra postage. No, they don't. Because this is just, um, it's like sending letter mail. So, you know, when you get a sheet of eight and a half by 11 and fold it up like this, it's about that size. I think it's just a little bit slimmer, but no, they don't need extra postage. It's just regular postage. Okay. All right. And then the last card that I have to share with you with this is another one that is stepped up and it features the Yora Peach DSP, which is a beautiful patterned paper. I love this one. We got some florals. We've got a little bit of blues in there. Love this one as well and this one. And then the back sides are kind of more simple patterns. Love this little peach one too and stripes and polka dots. Can't go wrong with those. 
So this is another one of the pattern papers that is on sale. And let me bring in the card. So if you want to use this card design and you want to make the card just a little bit more special, you can step it up a little bit. So here again, I've taken that card design. This time I've rotated it to be a horizontal card um, or a landscape card. My layers are a little bit different. So I used, I left a little bit of a border, a larger border of the peach card base showing. Um, so the pear pizzazz is four by five and a quarter. And then this DSP is three and seven eighths by five and an eighth. So the sizing is just alternate, altered just slightly. My greeting still grows across the bottom, but I stepped it up by using a die border strip underneath. I used a punch piece of vellum just to soften in behind the accents and then I stamped and die cut some little peaches and added that on there. Okay, so that's how you can take that same card design and step it up just a little bit if you want because I know that as card makers it is really really hard to keep things simple. Um, and then inside I just added the strip of patterned paper and then our greeting. All right, so let me bring all of those cards back in so you can see them. This one this way. Let's make sure that we can see all of them. And then this guy was the one that we started with. So we started really simple. I'm not sure if all of those will fit on there or not. There, let's do this. Let's do this one over here. And then this one under here, that should fit. So you can see that they're all the same card design. They just change the orientation just a little bit and um, you can step it up as much as you want. Keep it simple or step it up and you've got a great card design. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this. If you did, make sure you give me a, a thumbs up or like this post and or like this video and share it with your friends and family because you know what, any paper crafter can take these ideas and run with them um, because if you're a paper crafter you have lots of pattern paper on hand right okay and if you use this idea and create some cards be sure to share it in the comments i would love to see what you guys create okay so thanks so much for watching take care and have a great weekend